I mean, <laughs> that okay? Oh, oh, my asthma. I feel like I'm. Yes. <laughs> Hi. I am. Um, I'm sat on the ground. My laptop is on a chair. This is just what we're dealing with. I don't have an official filming spot yet. So this will have to do. Today, I wanted to talk about mental health, as you can see. And as you can probably tell, I'm going to be very awkward and uncomfortable the whole time, but I'm gonna power through. So if I make jokes, no, it isn't like making fun of mental illness. It's just the way I am. I have notes for my laptop. Uh, I didn't want this to be a really long video, but there's a lot of notes. So I'm gonna try and go through it as fast as I can, but I don't really wanna miss out important points. Uh, and I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna talk about my personal story with mental health and recovery, all that fun stuff. And then at the end, I'm gonna do a little q and I had people on my Instagram ask me mental health related questions. So, that's it. Let us begin. <laughs> I think um, I will start with diagnoses. Um, I'm not a huge fan of diagnoses, but when I found out what I have, it did actually help me. So I'm not gonna be like, I have this, 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 cause we'll be here all day. Um, but genuine, generally, I have borderline personality disorder. Wow, I'm known as BPD. Um, it is a disorder of mood and how a person interacts with others. It is the most commonly recognized personality disorder. So I'm not gonna talk about BPD specifically. I'm just gonna talk about my story because there's already enough information about BPD. My whole life I have had some sort of mental issue. Something has always not been quite right in my little brain. Uh, since I was a kid, I was, you know, the family always called me the black sheep or just like, oh, that's just M, she's just weird. Um, I've always had behavioral issues, I would say, especially as I got into my teenage years. Um, but it really all began, like I could live with it, but when it got to a point where I was like, oh, something's really not right, was in 2014 and I was 18 years old and it almost happened like overnight, which is really bizarre. Like I just woke up one day and I was like, damn, I don't feel good. <laughs> so yeah, I woke up this day and I just felt really weird, almost like a big heavy blanket of just shit had just been put on me and I didn't really know what to do. So I didn't want to worry my family, so I didn't say anything. So I went to the doctor for another reason. Um, and while I was there, I asked one of the nurses, I just told her basically, I was like, I'm feeling, you know, not great and I don't really know what to do about it. She, um, she also didn't know what to do about it. And she basically said, when you leave, ask at the reception for a counseling card. And I was just like, okay, obviously I didn't know anything about you know, how mental health is treated or anything. So I was just like, okay. So as I left, I asked and they gave me a little card and it just had details of like NHS counselors on it. And I was just like, that's terrifying and also not very helpful. So <laughs> yeah, so I left it for a little while and then I went back to my GP and I booked an appointment specifically for this. And that is where I kind of found out about BPD. And the doctor was less than helpful, really. Um, he basically said, you can't change your personality. And so kind of almost refused to send me further for more help or like whatever. He didn't really suggest much. He just said, oh, well, if you come back another time, we can talk about it more and you know, what your options are and whatever. But he was so patronizing and like, it just made me feel even worse. And I was just like, well, I can't change your personality, so I guess I'll just F off and live like this. Um, so yeah, after that, I left it for a long time. Uh, so I say that 2015, so 
when I was 18 uh, was the worst year of my life maybe, that sounds a bit dramatic, but I, it was kind of the worst year of my life. Um, I was just in a really bad place, I was suicidal, I was self-harming, I was having regular panic attacks, I was having mental breakdowns pretty much every day, and I got kicked out of my mum's house, not, not because of this, we're not going to go into that, but uh, I ended up moving into a caravan, uh, some of you may remember the caravan, um, and I lived there by myself for a good like eight months, I think, eight or nine months. And that wasn't good for me. Mm. At the beginning of 2016, my nan sadly passed away. And after that point, I kind of got worse. I was putting myself in dangerous situations. I was being very impulsive, being irresponsible. Um, just not a good place. <laughs> and my mum then basically pulled me aside one day and was like, I would like you to see a psychologist and I was like no no not happening don't be stupid not doing it and she got kind of emotional and just said you know um I, she said please go for me I know you're in a bad place I hate seeing you like this just go for one session and then you don't have to go again I said fine <laughs> I was like I'll go to one just because she was upset and then you know, I didn't want my mum to be upset. So um, I went to a session and the lady was very, very nice. And she said at the end, I really think I can help you. I think this will really benefit you. Um, so why don't you just come back for one more session? Um, and you know, it, it, it became a weekly thing. I went every single week for about six months. And during that time, my boyfriend at the time also moved into the caravan with me. So it was kind of like, oh, I'm not alone anymore. This is good. Oh, I have some help. This is good. So I was, I was okay. I was, you know, doing, doing all right. <laughs> she, she did help me a lot. She helped me become a lot more self-aware. She made me feel like less of a freak. <laughs> um, and at the end of 2016, I decided to stop going. I decided I didn't want to go anymore. I never really enjoyed going, like you're not supposed to enjoy counselling or therapy, I guess. So I was like, I don't really like this and I feel good. But really, I had met a new guy. And I don't want to say that that's why I was feeling so happy, but I think that was a big distraction. I was so focused on this new thing that was, you know, becoming. And so I was like, oh, I don't feel like crap 24-7, therefore I don't need this anymore. So I stopped going. Long story short, I shouldn't have stopped going. <laughs> 2017, I moved across the country, like five hours away from all of my family and friends. And I ended up, unfortunately, kind of living alone again a lot of the time. Um, so all of 2017 and I would say 2018 was kind of a, you know, I started to go downhill again. But this time, because I was so self-aware, I was kind of like, you know what, I know that this is, you know, what this is. I know that I need to not just try and get through it by myself. Um, I just got this overwhelming amount of anger and sadness and like hopelessness. I just felt like I was stuck in this place and I could not escape it. So I booked myself in to therapy. So my new therapist, um, I don't know why I'm doing this. she was a therapist, not a psychologist or anything like that, she was a therapist and she specialised in BPD and I found her by myself and I booked in by myself which is very brave and I'm still really proud that I managed to do that because even just sending an email like I need help is really difficult and I know that. So I booked myself in with her and she was incredible. I worked with her every week for about 10 months and I'm confident to say that she is the main reason that I am where I am today as I don't want to pinpoint it just on her because I did a lot too but she helped me create a plan almost. She gave me the confidence to do the things that I wanted to do. 
So over the time that I was seeing her, I worked really hard. I had like three jobs. I saved as much money as I possibly could have. And I started traveling and I know I'm privileged to be able to do that. And I'm not saying that this is why I got better because it's definitely not. But for me, it's been a dream for so long and it helped me so much. So I went to America with my friend then I went back to America on my own for like a month. Then I went to Spain and I went to Belgium and then like London, I just, I, you know, I did, I did the things that I've always wanted to do. And one other thing that isn't a major point, but I just want to mention it. Oh, I'm sweating. Anyway, I learned through my therapist that I was getting a lot of my happiness or I was putting my happiness on somebody else. So I only felt like I could be happy with somebody. I hated being alone. I still hate being alone, but I hated who I was by myself. I just had to have someone there. And in terms of like BPD, it's known as a favorite person, which is just you idolize this single person to give you all the happiness and care that you need. And that's not healthy. You shouldn't be with somebody if you can't be happy being by yourself. Does that make sense? So in 2019, which is where we are now, uh, me and my partner broke up. It was a mutual thing. We are on good terms. Uh, it just, it was very sad, but it needed to happen. I needed to learn to love myself by myself. I know that sounds so cheesy, but it's genuinely true. I couldn't keep living only happy with someone. So we broke up this year and I continued to work with her through everything. And then I stopped seeing her in June this year. Uh, when I got back from one of my trips, we talked a lot about it and we both agreed that I was in a place that we were both confident I could continue without therapy for now, like for now, for the time being. <laughs> Which brings us to now. It is now October 2019 and last week I moved to Spain, um, which is something I wanted to do for a really long time. I just didn't think I could. I could and I did. So I've moved to Spain. Um, I am single, not that it matters, but I am still working on loving myself by myself. And um, but I have learned that I don't like being alone, not just in terms of like I'm clingy, I need someone, but like, I just don't really like being on my own. I like people, I like spending time with people. So I've agreed that I don't want to live by myself. So I have my own room, I have my own space, but I have a roommate who's like my best friend. So I think that's probably the best scenario for me right now. This is probably the best thing that I can do for that. Yay. <laughs> I have not displayed any self-harming behaviors for over a year now, which is something I never thought would be a thing. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. Um, I have actual motivation now to make a lot of my dreams come true, do the things I want to do in my life before I just couldn't even like get out of bed to do it. But now I have the motivation I'm learning to love myself after so long of hating myself. It's a challenge, but it's it's going pretty good. Um, I am feeling genuinely in a good place. Probably the best I have since I was like 15. So that's great. <laughs> I do just want to make clear that I'm not saying I'm cured, I'm great, I'm the happiest person in the world because it's not true. I still have bad days, I still have, I call them meltdowns, it's just when things get a bit too much. Um, but I'm having more good days than I am bad days and that's what's important in recovery. It's kind of like an uphill battle, you can fall back down the hill but as long as you get back up and keep going, that's all that matters. And for me, it's like, although I still have these problems and I will for the rest of my life because it's, you know, incurable, I'm learning to deal with them in healthy ways, which is like 
the goal. You know what I mean? That's kind of what we all want, right? Don't know what I'm doing. That is my story. I guess my mental health journey. Um, try not to get too deep. Try not to give you too many details because, you know, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I hope to be not an example, but just like a someone that you can say, oh, well, she did it so I can too. Do you know what I mean? And as cliche as it is, and I know you hear it all the time, but it really does get better. It's not easy, you have to fight, you have to really work, but it does get better. It's taken me like six years, like almost six years. So, you know, but I did. So, so I'm gonna do a little Q&A. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of questions, so I don't want this video to be really long, so I'm gonna go through them as fast as I can. I just picked the ones I didn't answer already. So the first question is, if you could give past you advice now that you've been on your journey, what would you tell her? How would you have that conversation? I would just say, as bad as it is right now, and I know that you feel like giving up hope, just don't. Like everyone should have that little, tiny glimmer of hope of like maybe i'll get better don't ever give that up because it can get better and i wish i could just tell her to stop being such a stubborn little bitch and just go and get help or just ask someone for help even like i wish i just talked to my mum sooner like a friend someone just talk to somebody they will help you <laughs> How have you managed to keep your self-esteem and confidence during all your issues? Something I found the hardest, especially with problems with my skin, I know you have suffered with, yes. So I used to do things that would make me feel more confident in myself. Like, I know your image is not that important, but for some people, it is. And if it makes you feel better, then that's fine, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. So for me, yeah, I got my skin. I had, um, I was on Rakuten for six months, so I got I have clear skin now, which helped me immensely. I got more tattoos, I got more piercings, I changed my style a little bit, I changed my hair all the time. And that might not be the healthiest way to deal with it, but as long as you're not hurting anybody else and you're not doing you know, damage to your body, then do the damn thing. Do what you want. Make yourself, you know, look how you wanna look. Don't do it for anybody else but you. Do you have days mental health doesn't seem a big deal? Yes, I do. And I really never thought that would be a thing because my mental health was such a huge part of my life when I was feeling shite. I never thought I would have a day that I didn't even think about it. So for me, when I'm out and I'm doing things and I'm busy is when I'm great, you know? <laughs> like, I don't even really think about it unless something specific happens like, and I get like triggered, but it is a thing and it does happen and it's great. So yeah, I do. <laughs> Sorry for the loudness, I'm turning on the air conditioning. It's friggin' hot here. Next question. First step for getting help, how did you overcome? So for me, I went to my GP and although it didn't work out, that is unfortunately for most people the first step. So I did that just because that's what I thought you had to do and at that time I wasn't at my lowest point do you know what I mean I was this was just at the beginning so I feel like don't let it get so bad that it's hard for you to make that first step and if you are in that place where it's really hard you just need to talk to somebody and get them well they will help you they should want to help you make that first step is it okay to feel shit from time to time yes that's perfectly normal. We're human beings. Our emotions and feelings are insane and crazy. So it's okay. And sometimes when I'm having a really bad day, I just, I just let it happen. I just sit and watch TV and just hopefully the next day I'll feel better. And usually I do. So yes, it's fine. Do you think two broken people can work out? Will they ever heal properly? I'm guessing you're saying in a relationship. And in my personal opinion, not when they are at the beginning of their recovery. Does that make sense? So a boyfriend that I had when I was in a really bad place was also in a really bad place. And 
Although we connected because of this, it was also something that stopped us getting better. And I'm not saying it's the same for everybody, but that's just my personal experience. I don't think they can really properly heal if they are together because they're kind of not dragging each other down, but almost like if one's having a good day and one's having a bad day, it's like, oh, well, you, you know, I feel like recovery is different for everyone. But for me, I don't think I could have really healed in that environment, seeing someone else in such a bad place. Did mental health affect with your jobs? So when I was at my lowest point, I had this job. It was an okay job. My original manager was amazing, always checked in to see if I was okay. He was really understanding of you know my needs and my issues at the time and he tried to work through them with me. Then we got a new manager. He didn't understand mental health issues whatsoever. He was really inconsiderate of them. He didn't seem to care. It made the job very, very difficult and I won't go into detail of what happened, but it was just a bit of a disaster really. So it did affect one of my jobs, but since then I've had other jobs and my managers have been very understanding and very kind. So I think it just depends where you work. <laughs> How do you love yourself after hating yourself for so long? And another one is, do you struggle with self-esteem? I think they kind of go together. So after hating myself for so long, I think having a support system around me, including my therapist and my family and my friends who were telling me, you know, you're not a bad person. You're not this horrible picture you've painted in your head of yourself. And I don't know if I could have really recovered if I didn't have that constant reassurance that I wasn't this piece of shit that I really believed that I was. Um, I do still struggle with self-esteem, especially when I meet new people. I think everyone hates me. To this day, I think people hate me and they pretend to like me. So that is something I am still working through. But yes, I do struggle with self-esteem. And yeah. <laughs> Are you tired from fighting your dark mental health? So this is interesting actually, because this is another thing that I learned through therapy. My brain is, so a normal brain I would say is, you know, thinking and doing things at about 70% most of the time. For me, it's 100%, 100% of the time. It doesn't stop. It is constantly going insane. There are constantly things going through my mind. And when I was in a really bad place, those things were really bad. And that's why I think I struggled so much, because I just could not shut the brain off at all. Couldn't relax. It was just constantly there. So now it is still 100% and I am still, it's very, very fast, but I'm learning to kind of slow it down a little bit. And the things I'm thinking of aren't horrible. They're just really, really random and stupid. And it does get very tiring, um, but there's not much I can do about that. So yeah. <laughs> the last question I'm gonna answer is best cure for bad days slash sadness. They also said depression. I don't have depression, uh, but BPD, one of the symptoms is kind of depression. So I would say you just have to find things that make you happy. Even when you don't think they make you happy anymore, they will still give you some sort of joy. So for me, it's like my hobbies. So I like music, I like listening to music, I like mixing, a um, bit of exercise, everybody says it, but it's true. I like skating, I like going for walks. Um, a favorite TV show so for me at my worst Adventure Time was my thing and I just I felt like shit I would just watch Adventure Time for hours and hours and hours eat the sweets eat the chocolate do what you need to do if you've made it this far thank you very much I'm impressed that you've managed to listen to my annoying voice for this long um, but I hope you enjoyed the video I'm really hoping that by sharing my story and being kind of vulnerable <laughs> is gonna help some of you realize you're not alone and that it does get better, there is hope for you. Um, I'm always doing little Q and A's on my Instagram, so if you have any more questions about this, I'm more than happy to answer it there. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. It's, it'll all be gravy baby, do you know what I mean? <laughs> See you later. <laughs>